Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host Aaron and on today's episode we are adding running water to the cargo trailer camper conversion. This is going to be a full DIY build project for under $100. So if this is your thing and you're looking to get water into your cargo trailer camper conversion or RV, stay tuned, stick around and let's get right into the parts list. I'll be adding all the links to everything you see in today's video in the description below. So now that we got our hole pre-cut with our jigsaw, let's talk a little bit about the uh, the sink. Now this is a simple salad bowl from the dollar store and I drilled a hole in it at an inch and an eighth and used a bulkhead fitting to uh, just kind of hold it together. I also added a union fitting, a shut off ball valve and a hose barb fitting for the end. Now I went all half inch with this uh, just to give me the opportunity to fill up the sink and then open the ball valve to drain it. So let's move on to the pump. Once you receive your pump, it's going to come out of box and it's going to look just like this. It's going to have a black and red positive negative and you're going to need to do a few things. First off, you're going to find out what's in and what's out. You're going to want to pull water through and run to your faucet with the other. So I found a schematic online. That's going to be your in with the circle above it, and that's going to be your out. You're going to also want to do a few other things. One, add an inline fuse, and it says right here on the pump, you're going to need a 3.5 max for a fuse required. So you're going to want to add yourself one of these inline fuses and find yourself the correct fuse. Add your three. I'm going to be using a five. I'm going to be incorporating that on the red line, the positive line. So I'm going to go ahead and also while I'm at it, I'm going to add a little bit of extra wire to run to the battery as where I want to place my pump is a little short. So I'm up, I'm stepping up a little bit with a little bit bigger gauge wire and I'm going to be adding some ring terminals on the ends. So let's go ahead and get that done. And then we're going to want to test the pump to make sure it works because you don't want to, you know, go through all this, all this uh, work and find out that your pump doesn't work. One more thing about this pump, it has a pressure switch at 35 PSI. So once you basically hook this up to your battery, it's going to call, uh, call for water and it's going to pressure up your system. And once it gets to 35 PSI, it's going it, to, well, it's going to kick on and then it's going to start pumping water uh, through your supply lines. And uh, once you add once you uh, turn the, the uh, faucet on, that's when it's gonna pull the water, it's gonna continue running. Once you turn it off, it should shut the pump off. So we'll see, I'm learning too as I go. And uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a specialist in pumps, but we're gonna find out together and we're gonna run this all together and figure it out step by step. If you find yourself in the situation where you need to add, extend your wire, make sure that you upsize on the gauge uh, to have less stress on your pump. Also, I'm gonna incorporate two butt connectors and connect those, make my line longer, add my fuse, add my inline fuse and hook up to the battery and test and see if it works. Go ahead and add your butt connector, non-insulated. These are insulated butt connectors. They have shrink installed in them already. You just heat them up and they together I'm gonna use my white wire as my red wire my positive and then my negative is gonna be black to black when that's done and all crimped give yourself a pull test on all of them and make sure that they're not just false crimped Go ahead and take your torch. You go ahead and tape that up. Some electrical tape. So I've gone ahead and exposed my other end of the my line, two-way wire. I'm going to install my inline fuse and my terminal rings.
and give ourselves a pull test. Our ring terminals are installed along with our inline fuse and we're going to add in our fuse. So now that that's in, we can go ahead and test our pump and see if it works. So we're definitely not going to want to run our pump dry. So we'll touch back on this and the products that we're using, but I'm just going to cut two lines off of this and plug them in. This is braided vinyl tubing, uh, 10 feet of it, 3 8 inside diameter and 5 8 outside diameter. So we're going to go ahead and makeshift this uh, to make sure the pump works. With some gear clamps, I'm just going to run this tube. I'm going to cut a little chunk off for the other side and I'm going to run this tube right into the water line on the inside, on the in, on the pump and it's going to pull water and push out the other side. As of right now, I'm just going to gear clamp these down because that's where they're going to stay. And I'll be adding another couple fittings for this to run to the faucet. And I'll show you that in a few minutes. But I'm going to clamp these down, make sure that nothing, make sure that nothing leaks. Make sure everything's tight. Feed the inside in on the pump to our fresh water. And we're just going to prop that up for now and hope we see water come out of this one once we hook it up to the battery. Okay, this is the moment of truth to see if our pump works. We got our inline fuse in and we have our negative hooked up. I'm gonna connect the positive and we are going to see if we have uh, the pump in working order. Yeah, okay, so it's working right now. Let's get that put in the right way. But the pump works. So let's talk about an in-depth parts list. So we talked about the braided vinyl tubing, which I've already used up to uh, test the pump. We've covered the pump. We've uh, explained exactly what we need to add to the pump to make it fully functional. So we got the braided vinyl tubing, 10 feet of that, 3 8 inside diameter and 5 8 outside diameter. Then you're gonna wanna pick up yourself some gear clamps, quarter to three quarters, mini gear clamps. I went ahead and picked myself up a, a brass hose barb, quarter to quarter, uh, ID to MIP, a brass pipe, 3 8 MIP to a quarter inch FIP, and a brass hose barb, 3 8 ID by 3 8 FIP. So go ahead and pick yourself up some of that and a little bit of Teflon tape, along with I grabbed myself 20 feet of quarter inch inside diameter to 3 8 outside diameter clear vinyl tubing. So that's what's going to be connected to the um, that's what's going to be connected to the faucet. And I picked this faucet up on Amazon for about 20 bucks and it's basically ha it basically has just a one one line system. It comes with a couple of these that you can play with to make sure they work. So I took this to the hardware store and I checked everything. These are just simple push connects and you basically put your, your countertop between or whatever you're working with. And then you just simply tighten it all together, add your hose. So let's get started on that install and uh, tighten up some fittings and make things work. 
again with this faucet it's basically a reverse osmosis uh, faucet if you're familiar with those but basically turns on and turns off and it swivels as well so and you hook up these brass barbs and these fittings together and show you how I'm going to connect some how I'm going to connect some hoses together so what we're doing here is we're just simply building a, a union fitting to make a smaller hose connect to a bigger hose. And that's all we're going to do right there. So now that we got our fittings all Tefloned up, let's go ahead and tighten them up. Time to connect our hoses. We're going to connect our 3 8 inside diameter to our quarter inch inside diameter with our union prefabbed union fitting. We're going to add our gear clamps first so we don't forget. And we're going to add a little bit of water to make it pretty easy fit. Go ahead and slide that one on in nice and tight. fits nicely it's perfect go ahead and tighten up our gear clamps and then measure out our hoses to our faucet well we're getting close let's install our faucet first we got a just a plate a rubber a rubber fitting for that fits inside the plate and then a rubber washer and we're gonna install all that on the top and we're just going to connect it with this on the bottom. Just make sure everything's lined up. Fresh out the box, you'll get two fittings like this. This is quarter, this is quarter. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's quarter to quarter. And I'm gonna add some Teflon tape to that. Connect those two, push connect. Okay, now that that's all tight, my quarter inch line. That's in. And time to prefab and see where I'm going with all this. Um, maybe tighten everything up, make it look a little bit more presentable. So I'm gonna go ahead and install my pump higher up because this area continues to be a, a gear storage and stuff like that. So I would like to keep my pump up and out of the way and then I can strap my lines um, up and over and use some P-clamps or something like that to hold them into place for when the trailer's in transport. Okay, folks, this is the main event here. Uh, we're gonna see if everything works and hopefully uh, I don't get a shower in here from not tightening something up properly. But I don't want you guys to miss anything because I'm at the final stage here. So let's go ahead and hook up our red and uh, see what happens. So I think that is pressured up to 35 PSI, hopefully. So the pump stopped, it turned on, but it, it stopped. So that's what we want. Make 
sure everything's tight. And let's bring you up here. Okay, folks. Let's let's make it happen. <laughs> Full throttle turn off and it turns off the pump so at 35 psi so that means it's it's got its 35 psi I hear a, a thump here and there I don't have any leaks We're in pretty good shape so far hearing a thump does that mean I have a leak oh Okay, I do have a little bit of a leak here at the bottom of this. So I do have a leak right here, right above my electrical. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug all that, close that up and see what's happening there. It looks like it's leaking out of the top. So I got some fixing to do. Well, everything was going smoothly until that. And I think we're always gonna expect something to go wrong, but it's going to be the plastic piece that's always going to fail, it seems. I did everything right. I kind of figured I'd, I didn't over tighten it. I put Teflon tape on it, but you know what? Sometimes that's just the way it happens. But the sink's holding. Reading the instructions helps. Um, I don't know if I did something to that or wrecked it or over tightened it or whatever. But the fact of the matter is it doesn't work. But this comes with a few other fittings so I just have a union that basically fits my hose and we're gonna see if that works so just swap out the fittings because they give you three so that's awesome let's hope hopefully it's not too much pressure for this uh, for these plastic parts if not there's always shark bites that I can pick up at the hardware store which are brass which maybe would work so let's give this another shot and see if it works. I'll place you right there and hopefully you can see that fitting. That's the new fitting I just installed and everything's pushed in nice and tight. I'm going to apply power and see if it leaks again. So I think we're up to 35 PSI so that's why it turns off. Everything's tight now. Double check, triple check. And we are going to add some more water and see if it leaks. No leaks. Awesome. That's perfect. I'm not hearing that thump of the pump which was kind of telling me I had a leak. Lucky it comes with a couple extra parts. It makes my life easier, stops me from going to the store, but I'll definitely keep an eye on that and maybe replace it with some brass. But other than that, everything's hooked up and working. Let's go ahead and drain it. Curious to see how much it actually drains, but that being a bulkhead, I'm considering there's going to be a little bit of water left over, and that's why I hesitate to silicone this down. I think food particles will get stuck in and around there. If I were to do this all over again, I would definitely uh, weld a collar underneath, but I mean, this is for video purposes. Who's got a welder always kicking around, and maybe in the end it would cost you a lot of money to have a welder you know, TIG weld a collar in there with the same apparatus as that with a ball valve and stuff, but it would leave you a nice flush um, and where you wouldn't have that water left over. So I won't be siliconing the, the sink in. I'll leave it like this so I can simply pull it out and drain it outside and clean it out if I have to. I mean, this is a nice fishing trailer and we might have some fish guts and stuff like that in this sink. Uh, we'll be doing meals while we're out on our fishing trips. So I'll definitely have this removable. 
Well, folks, hopefully this video helped you with your build and uh, adding water system to your cargo trailer camper conversion or RV. But I want to give a huge shout out to Frontier Apparel for providing you with some swag for some of these videos in my adventures. You can go check those guys out on Instagram. Again, Frontier Apparel. Uh, rocking some pretty sweet leather patch hats. This is the Pike Hunter. Go and check out their, their Instagram. Give them a follow and check out their websites. Again, another one I'd like to give a shout out to is Fishing for Compliments Creative. Uh, rocking the that looks fishy that uh, just dropped just recently so go ahead and give those guys a give them a follow too as well on uh, instagram and all their platforms but i like the fish i like the outdoors and when they provide me and help me out with uh clothes and stuff like that just betters the channel so go ahead and follow ffc creative on instagram and frontier apparel again guys thanks for tuning into the channel much appreciated hopefully this helped you out in your uh your builds i like nothing more than to help out our community of uh diyers uh there's nothing better than i like more than doing these little builds and putting them together and helping further everybody else's knowledge so thanks again for tuning in much appreciated and we'll see you guys on the lake